Hey everyone, this is Amazing Fantasy Football. I, of course, am Josh, and he is Chris. And Chris, he is. How are you doing today, Chris? I'm doing wonderful, despite some uh, issues I'm having with some computer stuff. Um, as yeah. I always say, <laughs> every yeah, show, got, I love Sundays. You got, you got some bent pins. Bent pins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't want to go too far down that rabbit hole. Because it might be depressing, but no, I'm I'm in a great mood. Have yeah, a great I don't, day. I don't I don't want you to get all get your feathers all <laughs> ruffled. We're gonna have a good Chris. show here. We are here yeah, to yeah. talk about some uh, rookie prospects coming up in this year's draft, which of course is in about ten days, maybe eleven. Um, as of recording this, of course, it is a week from this Thursday. It is what the 29th. Is that right, Chris? That's when yes, the draft off is. Top of my head, yes. It is the 29th. And speaking of the draft, we will be in person together in Chris's basement studio. We will be doing that on our Twitch Twitch, Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash amazing fantasy football, which you can check out right up there. And uh yeah, that would be for the people that are watching it on YouTube, of course, in podcast format. You can just look at the show notes and it will be in the show notes too. And at the end of the video of too. So whatevs. So we're going to talk about some quarterbacks and some running backs today. Um, but first, we have some news. There was some, I think it was kind of big news. James Conner got signed by the Arizona Cardinals this past week. Um, Chris, I want to take your temperature on it because I know a couple of years ago you were a big James Conner fan. So how do you feel about mm -hmm. this move? Um, I think a lot of NFL teams like to address as much as they can all of their needs across the board at every position going into the draft and particularly the first round to be able to be free to take best player available. I think Connor is probably that type of piece of, you know, just kind of insurance and depth, but we mm -hmm. all know he's quote injury prone. So I worry that, or I'm sure they're worried he couldn't complete a season if, if, if his life depended on it. Uh, no offense. I know he recovered from cancer um but uh i could also be wrong because um and forgive me i don't know his name off the top of my head but his old offensive coordinator uh and or running backs coach from his lucrative years in pittsburgh is i is in arizona so there's some ties there um he can get the best out of james connor but at the end of the day i don't even i'm a i'm a chase Edmonds fan and i don't even know if either Edmonds or connor precludes him from taking a day two running back so it's uh I worry about a 50-50, 55-45. Um well I mean that's that's, that's what uh, last year it was I mean the snap percentages was 55 Kenyon Drake and about 45 Chase Edmonds. So exactly. I mean personally yeah. I'm kind of looking at like take Kenyon Drake out obviously he's not with the team anymore and plug James Conner in and on a, and if you give Conner 55% of the workload I think that's going to actually be better for him as far as being able to stay healthy because in Pittsburgh, they were kind of just um, Pittsburgh's more of that team of just leaving one back out uh, there. Feature back feature back. Yep. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I think this is going to be a little bit better for James Connors health. It'll be, is it going to be a nightmare for someone who like me is a chase Edmonds manager in dynasty? Yeah, a little bit, but, or the other person in our league that is the James Connor manager, Sure, but I think overall you might actually end up seeing Connor staying probably staying a little bit more healthy throughout the year. He's not going to get so banged up like he was in Pittsburgh. And, and potentially he's going to have like a better offensive line to run behind too. I'm thinking the Cardinals are going to grab at least a player in the draft, probably more in like day two for to sure mm -hmm. up their offensive line. But okay. it could it could easily happen in the first round as well. So they do that, and you you know Connor could be a decent um a decent uh you know middle more of a mid round running back that you can draft for your team, mm -hmm. but you just don't expect you know twenty eighteen numbers out of him, which was his best year in Pittsburgh. Yeah, yeah, it's funny we looked at the pre pre show guys, and uh, I was kind of thinking his best year was a little better than it was, to be quite frank, and. Uh... Well, I mean, I he had he did have fifty five catches in twenty eighteen, and he good. and he that's got great, almost yeah. he got up to almost a thousand yards, and he did that in I think it was thirteen games. If memory serves correct, um, oh, that's a very good point. He never finishes a season, so that yeah, nine hundred. Yeah, it was in, it wasn't thirteen games in twenty eighteen. So you know he was on pace for over a thousand, but you know I I think the Cardinals liked him uh, got him to. You know, they it may it made them. It didn't make it doesn't make them force uh, drafting a running back. Kind of like what you were saying. 
you know, I guess. It. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now, I think at the end of the day, Edmonds fits Arizona very well, but mm-hmm. I also concede that he's not the most talented dude in the world and it doesn't no. stop them from taking a, like you said, taking a run back. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's move on to our quarterback prospects. We're going to cover five, maybe six. We're going to see how fast we can get through these. We're going to try and do this a little bit quicker because we have a lot of names to cover today. We want to try, try and hit at least five quarterbacks or running backs. So, Chris, why don't we you start off to the top with the number one guy? And number that one guy meaning would be the 101, the oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Trevor Lawrence. Yeah. Um I've got a couple of uh measurables here to start off. Four seven of unofficial forty. Uh, FYI, folks, all these forties are gonna be quote unofficial because there was not a combine. It was all pro days. So yep. pro days tend to embellish that uh those um, stats. They, they can. Yeah. Uh, he's, uh, six, six to 20, um, widely regarded as the greatest prospect, uh, greatest quarterback prospect since Burrow and Andrew Luck. Um, Lawrence has two inches on Luck, but Luck has, has 40 pounds on Lawrence. <laughs> Luck was a big boy. Um, he, he runs well. His ab- ability to throw on the run is elite level. So expect lots of play action, uh, played only 11 games, 10 for conference only schedule. And then the semis, uh, versus Ohio state uh, mm-hmm. in 2020. Uh, keep that in mind when looking at his stats. Um, still, he averaged approximately three touchdowns per game in both 2019 and 2020. That was two and a half passing touchdowns per game and a half a rushing touchdown per game. So, yeah, uh, uh, versatile, can kind of do it all. Good accuracy, threw for 65% in uh, 2018 and 19 uh, and improved uh, to a very nice 69% in 2020. But he has shown lapses in judgment, uh, bonehead plays, uh, struggled at the beginning of 2019 season. Mm, oh, yes, I uh, forgot so- about that. Yeah, some other little criticism that's come out lately. Uh, some comments he made on, uh, I think it was Twitter. Uh, uh, these are quotes. Uh, it's not like I need football for my life to be okay. I want to do it because I want to be the best I can be. I want to maximize my potential. Who would want to? You kind of waste it if you don't. Second quote, I don't need football to make me feel worthy as a person. So the the detractors take this and run with it like he's not in love. That's what they were talking about. I didn't mm-hmm. see any of this Twitter uh uh rigmarole stuff um i just i was just like oh whatever and okay but i mean those that's reading too much into it i think that he's just you know trying to make himself not be a one-dimensional person as in football is my life and blah 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 like there's more to things in life than football i have other interests as well he's not saying i don't want to play football he's just saying that i i have other interests other than football as well you know i could couldn't agree more chris is a person 100% 100% feels that way. Could dismiss this instantly as soon as I saw it. Chris says the draft analyzer dismissed it. But I have to take into account how the teams feel at like at the top. I mean, when you're talking about the 101, you are splitting such fine hairs that stuff like this kind of comes into the equation. Again, I'm going I'm going to default back so, to but this is nothing. Uh, yeah, exactly. I'm just saying keep in mind that Somebody else might feel different. Somebody else high up in Jacksonville or something. Like but he's going number one, folks. I'm not I'm not going down that road. I'm completely dismissing that stuff. He sounds like he is plenty motivated and a great teammate. Um, I'll, you know, I'll defer to his hardware and his accomplishments when it comes to critiquing him in that manner. Uh, I think he also led some very good. Um, some BLM protests, too, in Clemson, in the Clemson campus as well. Or he oh, was okay. he was he was an early adopter to that uh to, to the Black Lives Matter movement as well, um good last guy. year. So nice, he's got a good head on. His so shoulders. so he's I, got I, a I he's got a line. he's got a social uh radar, if you will. Yep. A, a uh, yep for the, for that sort of thing. Um, where do I take off here? Uh, with a conglomerate of offensive minds in Jacksonville, it's hard to pinpoint exactly what this offense is going to look like. Uh, and also with having a versatile quarterback like Lawrence, it makes it a little more difficult to pass run. Um, however, speculation is our game, and there are some strong indicators that this will be a run first attack. Daryl Bevel. We all know Daryl Bevel loves to run the ball. He has done so his whole career. Minnesota from 06 to, 20, to 2010. Seattle from 2011 to 17. I'm going to the beast argue mode this, years. but whatever. We've argued this the, in the past that it's, yeah, Daryl Bevel was is is a run guy but he was also when he was in seattle he was the passing um coordinator when they won the super bowls not the running the passing so but our detraction against seattle is always they won't less russ cook now that could be more p carroll than daryl bevel i can concede that but i'm still definitely leaning that this is a run heavy attack 
Uh, rookies usually need a defense and a run game to take pressure off of them. Uh, the passing game coordinator is Brian Schottenheimer. Uh, more Seahawks and not letting Russ cook. More run game. Not to mention, you kids are probably too young to remember his dad, Marty, who was known for Marty Ball, which uh, was a funny nickname for an ultra-conservative approach, running first and second down, throwing on third, and punting on fourth. It, the joke was that was literally the strategy to punt on fourth down. <laughs> Play it real safe. So that's I, didn't, Marty I thought Heimer he was more you. of a passing guy, but that no, I'm I'm not I'm not arguing with you. I'm just I, like that's how I remembered it. So yeah, okay, yeah. my bad. It's bad brain. So, how dare you not remember things properly? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, James Robinson. I'm assuming they don't draft a day two back. We'll get the lion's share, or I like the it. Jaguars share. <laughs> uh, Lawrence uh, will see less pass attempts, so he's probably undrafted and redraft. Uh, undrafted is probably a bit strong. He's probably. Yeah, backup you know, territory last like last two rounds or something maybe you pick him up on waivers in redraft dynasty is obviously different so you know that's that's my long and short of trevor lawrence cool. he goes 101 and uh he's a great prospect cool let's move on to zach wilson here who i think the jets are going to draft with the number two uh pick of the draft i i can't blame him either after watching some of that pro day video of zach wilson. um I only watched this for, uh, part of the first one, but man, the kid's got a freaking cannon on him. Like, and I guess like some of the, some of the things I've read about him, because as Chris and I have discovered that there is next to impossible to find college game film. Um, It, it is really, really hard. Like there is not a site. There is not a, like an NFL game as for college football, which I thought there was, but apparently there isn't. So we just kind of have to we kind of have to go. But <laughs> I, I went th through like about four or five different articles and whatever on every player that I I did just to not like quote one singular one. But apparently Zach Wilson has some problems trusting his own arm in the sense that he'll take some lesser throws instead of just pushing the ball down the field. Um, he needs to kind of get some faith in the fact in his abilities and um one of the problems with him as well is that sometimes he makes these off balance throws, which he's totally capable of doing. And sure. that's, and that's cool in college, but in the NFL, these, those are kind of throws can definitely get you in, in, pro, in trouble too. Like he needs to set his feet a little bit better. He has some problems with, with his footwork. Can that be fixed? Yes. But he's also mm -hmm. pretty accurate as well. Um, I mean, he ended up with college with a 67.6 per, uh, completion percentage. That's not a bad number. I mean, the NFL average is about six sixty six point six. Um, so, and you're doing that in college. Obviously, you want to see it a little bit higher in college, especially for a guy who, but did, played in a quote unquote weaker conference, a not a not yeah. power five conference, you know. But I don't know. I I really like I really like Zach. I think he's a really great prospect. I just um. I only the one thing I wonder about him is that he for his entire college career he played behind a good offensive line. So say he does go to yep. the Jets, which it sounds pretty pretty likely that it's going to happen. And you know his first year there, maybe the offensive line isn't all that great. He's probably going to have some problems adjusting to that NFL pressure that is going to be coming because the teams like yeah. to blitz rookie backs. Mm -hmm. So. That could be that could be some problems with him, uh, kind of learning on the fly there. Because I'm I'm assuming that, wolves. yeah, I'm assuming that he's going to be a day one starter in New York. Yeah. But I think that I think he has all the tools that he could really strive in. What is probably going to be like a West Coast offense there in New York, and he's not the only player that I'm projecting to go to the Jets either. Um, a player that we're going to talk about later, or I would love to see go to the Jets, but. Yeah, I don't really, I don't really have much else on Zach Wilson other than he it is also the name of my best friend back in first grade. Good old Zach Wilson, giving you a shout out. You work <laughs> on the other end of the building as I do at work. <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, I get the impression he's kind of a gunslinger, and he's probably the best arm talent in the whole draft. Um, if not the best, he's one of the best. You know, you can sure. ar you could argue um, Trey Lance or even Trevor Lawrence. You know, he's got a Trevor Lawrence that doesn't have a bad arm on him. Lance either. has a cannon. That's fair. Lance has a cannon. He yeah, sure does. Um, which is not why I divvied it up the way I did. But you know, I was just like, oh, I got the Trey Lance. I'm like, oh, this guy's got a cannon on him too. Um, anyways, that's like I said, that's kind of all I got on Zach Wilson. I, I don't know. I mean, if, if you and, and like I'm trying to think like dynasty wise, you know, like do you take him towards the end of the first round 
once all the running backs dry up and the, probably the, some of the receivers do as well, I'm asking you um, it, legit question. In the NFL draft. I'm no. sorry, in a dynasty draft is what you yeah. said. Um, yeah. Especially if, you're, see... if, especially if you're quarterback needy, yes. you know? Yeah, like say say question, uh yes. say you're that that guy that we were talking about in our dynasty league who just had Drew Brees retire and the guy the quarterbacks yes sitting behind him are not yeah, good we're not good underwhelming yeah for sure I usually see in a rookie dynasty draft yes uh, you put it perfectly as soon as those running backs and receivers the ones everybody loves are gone unless you've already got your starter um squared away for many years yeah you start grabbing those quarterbacks just because. Yeah. There's something to be said. Yes, it's only one uh, in these in this hypothetical situation. We're talking about a one quarterback uh, dynasty league, um, but there's something to be said for having that starter that you can plug in every single week. It's not like streaming. It's it's you can't stream in dynasty. You can't no. stream a quarterback in dynasty because the adult rosters are too deep. There's nobody on ravers, so you got to have somebody there. So yeah, if you're cleaned out of receivers and running backs, uh, take a quarterback. Yeah, and uh, Zach Wilson is be good at. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's got some wheels on him too. Like he's not, he's not. Yeah, I've heard he's not a Trey Lance. Uh, he's not a. I've he's heard... not a, a Justin Fields. You know, like mm-hmm. he's not a, a super mobile quarterback. But you know, there were I did see highlights of him taking off running too, and he's not slow, but he's also he's he's more of a you know elusive behind the offensive of line. Yeah, mm-hmm. not a well, not so. a. Well, nothing's open. Up. I might as well just run the ball myself, sort of guy. So, uh, no, I believe Justin Fields is next, and I believe you have him, this quarterback out yep. of Ohio State. Justin Fields, 6'3", 227, 4, 4, 4, unofficial 40 time. That's fast, folks. That's very fast for a quarterback. Hey, you got my combine um, time and size, too. I shrunk and oh, gained weight. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, high level accuracy. Uh, this is actually my guy kind of after doing some more research. I think he's probably my favorite QB. I'm still conceding that Lawrence is going one one I get it, but I'm really kind of falling in love with this dude pretty quickly. High level accuracy in 2018, 69% completion, 2019, 67% and 2020, 70%. That's in the big 10 folks. That's mm-hmm. in my opinion, if not the best, one of the best defensive conferences in all of college football. That's usually true. Has Great touch, leads receivers very well. Not your typical Ohio State quarterback. <laughs> if you recall, they have an awful history of quarterbacks in the NFL. Abysmal. Especially when you consider how successful they are in college. It's it's baffling. Uh, can run, but it isn't necessarily his MO. He likes to make plays behind the line of yep. scrimmage, if you will. Um, uh, there is a little bit of, I think, uh, some criticism. No, no, no. That was a different player. Never mind. Um, so he... Um, yeah, I don't I don't have much bad to say about him. I'm sure there's some detractors, but I just I don't understand the uh the uh negative press he's getting. I don't understand I think uh, like I think some of it is is that there's not a he doesn't have a long history of starting in yep. college. I mean he only started what two years for Ohio State because he sat a year behind Jake Fromm in Georgia, I believe. So, I so. yeah, that's I mean, yeah, he did. But um, yeah, and then he transferred to Ohio State. So yeah, I mean, that's usually some teams uh, want a bigger body of work, which is kind of what's going to, it's going to hurt our next guy in the list too. But Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Yeah. I don't know. I mean, there's just something about Justin Fields that like, and and it's probably the Dwayne Haskins and the Cardale Jones. That's why I was sure to mention that. Yeah. And the, it's um, abysmal. Oh man, who is that one dude that be converted to wide receiver? Uh, Baltimore for a minute. Um, Miller, the Raiders. Uh, I can't remember. He played for the Raiders. Shorter guy. Um, we're blank. About like ten years ago now. Um, yeah, something. We're like gonna look it up and be like smack. Yeah. Close. Anyways, but yeah, Ohio State does not have a good history of producing NFL quarterbacks, but that doesn't mean that this guy can't be. You know. It's like uh, okay. USC. They have a they have a horrible history of producing quarterbacks outside of Carson Palmer. Mm-hmm. So, and I, I I love Carson Palmer. I I'll, I'll still have your babies, Carson Palmer. If it were he's a heck of a quarterback, possible. like he he's Carson Palmer is probably the least to, to qualify for the one hundred and one. I think you got what you what you should get out of the one hundred and one just the bottom of it does that make sense yeah, like, I got yes it. you want you want a super bowl you want all pro you want all of this play out multiple playoff runs 
but talent wise, numbers wise, production, wins, losses, I think he was he was a pretty good open first overall pick. Uh, he also sustained some pretty bad injuries too. For sure. For sure. So anyways, so yeah, Justin Fields. Um do you think that he has there do you think there's a chance that he goes to San Francisco or do you think he's gonna fall? Or do you think San Francisco I think, pass on him? I think he goes to San Francisco. I mentioned that a little bit in my Mac Jones um uh, notes uh coming up here okay, in a little well, while. Well, but well, uh, no, we, we can touch on it a little bit real quick. I just think I was leaning Lance because of the mobility. I think Shanahan was kind of looking for another Kaepernick, but I'm leaning more it's back towards the accuracy side of things, and Fields is still very mobile and fast. Why so do don't you get me wrong. He wants a Kaepernick when he wasn't there when Kaepernick was there. Oh, no, he wasn't? No. I thought he used to be. That was Harbaugh. Yeah. My bad. My bad. So yeah, accuracy. <laughs> no, I just I I think the way they run their offense when you start to think about a Debo Samuel, uh, uh, you know, in the backs and the way they run their receivers and Kittle, it's just I think that it's it's run centric a bit. Um, it's you know don't have to have that number one alpha receiver. I think a running quarterback would right would help him. I think he's all for taking pressure off the running back in that zone game, and quarterbacks can produce. But at the end of the day, I think play action and accuracy are more important than that mobility. So I go fields. Cool. That's, that's who I think goes to San Fran at three. All right. Uh, our next quarterback we're going to talk about, or I'm going to talk about at least, is Trey Lance. Um, you know, quarterback out of North Dakota State, uh, which is where Carson Wentz came. And I figured out why he didn't play this past season. It's because they just got done with their season. That being, um, what is that? Whatever they're calling yeah, the they big ball now forget anyway they yeah they didn't play the year or whatever but yeah they didn't play at all in the fall and that's why he didn't play in 2020 yeah yep, yep. anyways um so trey lance i i mean i really like him as a prospect but i know he's got a lot of work he only has one one year as a body of work and, and that was, was a year ago yeah and that was in 2019 and it was also in the whatever like i said whatever they're calling the division two school the uh, conference whatever it's a smaller conference in a smaller school in other words um but that division doesn't mean you can't, what division 2a i don't know what they're calling it anymore <laughs> i'm pretty sure that's what it is go ahead <laughs> um i mean trey lance he's kind of the complete package he can run the ball well he can t i mean he's got a cannon on him he doesn't um i don't know if he has quite the quick release that zach wilson does I know he has. I don't think, I don't think many do, quite honestly. I don't. I th I know he has a quicker release, but he's not just that flick of the wrist and the ball sails seventy yards. You know, Zach Wilson yep. is that guy. Um, I think Trey Lance has a bit more of a wind up to him, but not much. Mm -hmm. He's not a. He doesn't have to take a couple of steps and like and like really wind up the ball like a Tom Brady has to nowadays. You know. Sure. I'm not saying Brady couldn't back in the day, but he certainly does too. Now he's that prototypical size too, six four, two twenty four. That would be Trey Lance, Dude. not Tom Brady. Um, the the only thing is, is that I think that Lance is one of those. Like I said, he's a he's a bit of a project in the sense that he kind of he only absolutely. Um, he has a lot of unknowns to him because he only played one year. He's um, he. Get this. He didn't throw an interception. Not one in 2019. Good Lord. That's, that that's, is... Regardless of level of competition, to me, that's impressive. That is bonkers. That is mm -hmm. straight bonkers that you can do that. Um, I would love him to go to San Francisco and sit a year behind Jimmy Garoppolo and come out as... I Like I said in uh, last week or the week before, but like by taking that, that year off and learning, I bet he could come out and be the next Patrick Mahomes. Like, I really think he has the talent to do it. It's just whether teams are willing to invest that kind of draft capital and then be patient enough to let him sit and learn how to play at an NFL level. And construct your offense and thereby your hiring of coaching and staff and whatnot around his talent set. Yeah. Because that's what it need, that's what he needs. Mm -hmm. He needs the right offense. He needs the right coach. And a, and a coach that's willing to work with him too and, you know, kind of show him the ropes and whatever. And I think that Jimmy Garoppolo is maybe willing to do it. I think he knows that his time is numbered, assuming that he does stay for his last year in San Francisco. Um, I think it would be 
really wise of him to kind of take the new quarterback under his wing and be a te- be a teacher, a mentor towards that guy. And Trey Lance could really be that guy. Whether it's and if it's someone else, let it be someone else. You know, Jimmy G, just be a professional about it, dude. You know, that's. I mean, I say that I say that to people at work too. But I mean, especially in the NFL, you're making millions. You might as well, you know. And you can have a long career as a as a a, a quarterback mentor too. You know. Like it, it might might suck right now, and it might mm-hmm. suck to to become um um uh cast cast type is that what typecast type typecast as that guy, but you could have a really long NFL career, making million. Sure. You know, I think I think Lance is is I think he should sit. I think he's a perfect candidate to for, sit for a year. I couldn't agree more. And because of that, like, and there, I mean, there is a possibility. That might fall into i don't think he does i don't think so at all but there's that mm-hmm. you know 10 percent chance that he falls into the second round or real late into the first just because teams are just going to be like man this guy is, has a world of talent but he needs he needs some some tutelage he needs some work for sure for sure so i, I just i think that lance is going to be one of those guys he's either going to be superstar or super bust and it just yep. and 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 all of that is going to depend on not necessarily lance but the team that he lands on the and how spot. they're going to treat him. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't think Mahomes, I, I can guarantee you Mahomes wouldn't be Mahomes without Andy Reid. I can guarantee you. Or Alex Smith for that matter, too. Very well said. Very well said. So, love me some Alex Smith. Let's, uh, let's, why don't we move on to Mac Jones, my least favorite guy that's probably going to get drafted. <laughs> Speaking of Alex Smith, this might be that type of player. Uh, <laughs> kind of, uh, just for sure. <laughs> No, no, I'm being a little harsh. Let me let me get into my notes. I don't here. I don't know, man. Alex Smith was a really good quarterback and he could throw the ball like reasonably deep. He just never would. They would Except never for that one year before Mahomes got there. Uh, yep, that? that's, true. that's true. Or when he got there. The that one year that Mahomes yeah. sat. Yeah. I saw that. That's <laughs> crazy, crazy, dude. Play that, like, play that year. Mm-hmm. In Kansas City. Well, no, be- better first overall pick. Uh Alex Smith or Carson Palmer? I, I love Carson Palmer too much. I got to go Palmer. I got to go Palmer. I love uh, Mac Jones. I think all the Mac Jones to San Fran is smokescreen. We already touched on that. Uh, I really hope uh, it is. Yeah. Only one year starting. Uh, took over for Tua after uh, the injury, Tua's injury in 2019. So there was 10 games in 2019, full starter in 2020. It was a phenomenal year. But I think the talent around him had a ton to do with his accomplishments. Uh, yeah. What does it say about a quarterback who throws 41 touchdowns, only four picks in 13 games? and loses the Heisman to his teammate, Devontae Smith. Now, granted, Devontae Smith was a historic, amazing season, uh, so there's that. But I just, I don't know. I'm underwhelmed. There were too many plays where Jones got max protect, uh, which is, of course, more than you know five or six blockers. Uh, Bama would only send out two or three receivers because they can and still get open. Mm-hmm. And Jones would hit the open guy because he had all day. I worry he won't handle the rush in the NFL. Uh, now there were throws under pressure that he nailed. Don't get me wrong, but I think he's going to have a... Uh, eye-opening experience. I think lack of experience in playing with potentially the most talented roster in the league could skew his value. Uh, what do we have here? I think, I Josh, think one of the, do you think, do you think Tua is the bees and knees, Josh, the creme no. de la creme? No, no. So you tell me that how Jones sat behind Tua and it took an injury to get him in. Yeah. I don't know. That's, that's a very good point. And what I was going to say too about Mac Jones is that, he made a lot of good throws in college, but and the thing that I read was he made a lot of good throws, but all his receivers were usually open, and they were usually open because they were talented receivers. He did, he wasn't he in other words he wasn't having to throw into tight windows, he was having to throw into wide open windows. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so from when he a comes, wide open platform too. Yeah. So when he comes to line. the NFL and when he comes to the NFL, he's going to have to make some tighter throws. He's not going to have a, a a wide margin of error. He's going to have a narrow margin of error. He's going to have to thread the needle more often. Can he do that? Hard to say. Can he throw the ball downfield very far? Mm, I don't think so. You know, he's he, he he's yeah. like Alex Smith in the Adequate, sense that he might he no, might be he guys. might be you know. I mean, we I dubbed uh, Derek Carr the Duke of Dink and Dunk, but this might be Mac Jones if he's getting a starting role. This is what he's going to become. He's going to probably be, become the next Alex Smith, only he's not going to be able to throw the ball very far downfield. Kind of just came up with this analogy. His floor is Alex Smith. His ceiling is Alex I just Smith. blanked. 
right. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I was going to say, folks. Um, Matt like Ryan. Matt his ceiling is Matt Ryan. I think that's okay. I think but that's Matt Ryan, okay. but, but that's Matt Ryan could throw the ball farther. I know. I know. I'm just saying. I don't know if he uh, can now. But Culmination of his career, his accomplishments could end up being as good as Matt Ryan. I also, the reason I thought that up in my head was I can see a team like Atlanta at four because they have a viable starter, uh, well, a very viable starter in Matt Ryan for a year or two, given that uh, Matt Jones you know, only really has that one full year. Plus ten games in twenty nineteen, um, yeah, he could stand to sit for a year, maybe. I don't know. I, I think maybe. they're kind of similar in that way because I think Atlanta values that type a Matt Ryan type than they would a Lance or a Fields. So, cool. That would be my prediction. But go ahead. Um, I was just going to say I'm going to move on to Kyle Trask real quick. Sounds um, good because I was done with Jones. Cool. Uh, Kyle Trask he is of course the Florida University of Florida quarterback. Um. He has he has the prototypical size of a quarterback. Of, you know, he's a 6'5", 239 guy. Um, he has a he has decent arm strength, but he's like he's probably better arm strength than Mac Jones. But he's certainly not a Trey Lance or, um, you know, a Trevor Lawrence or whatever. Sure. He, he's he's more of an average uh, to slightly above average arm strength than you know. He he doesn't have a howitzer on his shoulder. Um, he has zero mobility on him. He is not necessarily a statue, but he's he's kind of almost like a rooted tree back there. That I mean, he and and like he was lucky at, at Florida. He had a good offensive line, so he didn't have to move around in the pocket all that much. But he he is not fast. I kind of liken him to more of like a Peyton Manning in the sense that he is a pocket manipulator, and he needs a good offensive line around him to succeed. Um, he's struggled with some some decision making. He weirdly has struggled with some shorter throws, especially in his in, in his 2020 season, where he is percent his completion percentage actually dropped on throws mm. of 10 yards or less, which is very that's bizarre. Not. Yeah, that's not a good sign. And he really struggled when like Kyle Pitts and I can't remember the other wide receiver did not play in their bowl game. So, or uh, I'm sorry, in the conference championship, I believe it was. Oh, okay. So. Yeah, it's he's he's going to be probably a career backup. So if he even if he does a pretty good landing spot, like maybe he might get a year or two start out of him. I'm just saying this for more of a dynasty. Like people don't don't go jumping for joy because Kyle Trask he was a pretty um, well thought of name like a month or two ago, maybe more like in uh, February. That'd be okay. two months ago. Um, I just like I wanted to kind of look at him real quick and just be like, mm, okay, he's really not all that. Great. He's got size, but he's got some he's got some decision making and some mental things that he needs to be fixed, which can be fixed. But with good coaching, yeah, yeah, yeah he would be. Uh, he would. I would liken him to more of a, man in a sense that he needs. To a, who I'm sorry, Kyle Trask. I would like liken him to Matt Ryan more than Jones to oh, Matt Ryan. Okay. Uh, in a sense that he's got, like I said, he's got a decent arm. He's not very mobile. Um, you know, yeah, I could see, you know, if, if Atlanta wanted to wait till day two and pick Kyle Trask, could sit behind Matt Ryan and better value him. for sure. Mm -hmm. That's not a bad move right there. You know, depends on I'd where be... they're at with Ryan. I would say, yep. what is Ryan? 36? Mm, something like, like that. I think he's, I think he's in a, the last year or two of his deal. And I think they're going to try and play that out or maybe trade him after this year. I think That's he's, I think he's, I think up. he's on his, I think he's on his last year in Atlanta regardless. That that seems to be the general consensus. That's why I was bringing that up. I feel like so, he still has, as far as like he can play till he's 40, like a lot of, a lot of the really good ones are doing not all, not a lot of them. Yeah. But, let's, uh, I let's, think he uh, could. let's move on to some running backs here. Arby's, uh, the, the everyone's favorite thing in fantasy football, and yeah. also sometimes my least favorite thing in fantasy football because <laughs> running backs well can said. just be very maddening, and that's yeah. not Madden, very maddening. Um, let's start with Travis Etienne here. This is a guy I, like I always want to call him Travis Etouffee, which I know you're not familiar with the dish. But etouffee is a Cajun dish. I'm familiar with it. I know it's Cajun. I don't. Uh, is it a pastry? I don't remember exactly. No, no. What it's, it is, but I know it's, it's Cajun. Uh, it's it's kind of like a stew that usually is served over like 
um and it's made with I'll shrimp that. and sometimes etouffee, other yeah. food but yeah etouffee it's still a it's delicious and b i always want to call him travis etouffee so speaking yeah. of cajun food have you ever been to a crawfish broil uh sort of boil boil not broil boil boil, boil. it's amazing it is I, amazing i don't like bugs folks i eat that thing it's it's delicious i love it i haven't done bugs. it in so long because i, I just it's not so bugs. common up here in the midwest Hmm? What are you talking about bugs? Because they look like bugs. Yeah, but they're a Crawfish. shellfish. I know, but they look kind of like a bug. All shellfish kind of look like a bug. I hate bugs. Okay. <laughs> Down with bugs. That's the, th that's the title of this today's show. <laughs> anyway, we're talking about running back. Go ahead. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, uh, I mean, like everyone uh, thought that Etienne was going in last year's uh, NFL draft. He decided to stick around right. for a senior season at Clemson. Kind of I kind of wonder that. if he decided to stick around because last year was a really great running back class and this year is kind of a a, a bit of a lackluster so maybe mm. I don't know. Uh, so there's a, so Etienne actually did not benefit from sticking around this year. He um he played in like three less games than he normally does than he had the previous two seasons in 2018 and 2019. He hit 1600 rushing yards in both seasons. And this past year, he only hit 900. It wasn't the greatest season. He has he has seen his receive his receptions go up over the, over his career at Clemson. I some I kind of wonder, and I didn't really dive into this, but I kind of wonder if that is because like all their receivers started going into the NFL, and so the the receiving talent kind of went down a little bit, and mm -hmm. so Trevor Lawrence had to start looking at Etienne a little bit more. Um, the one thing, and this is the guy that I was talking about earlier when I was talking about with Zach Wilson that I, I kind of hope goes to the Jets is that because the Jets are of need of a running back, a talented running back, um, the predominant zone blocking scheme that the um oh boy, I don't remember the I don't remember the offensive coordinator that he was he was in San Francisco. Um I talked about this a couple weeks ago. It's yeah, um it the San Francisco guy, yeah. It's Mike LaFleur. He used to be he's Matt LaFleur's brother. That's who it is. Oh. Um, anyway, so if it like Travis Etienne, he does struggle with um, just kind of hitting the crease. He like he prefers to avoid contact and he will actually sometimes run more towards um, left and right or east and west, as they like to say, than run north south. And it's mainly just and I'm not really sure why, because he has some decent size. He's just he's just trying to outrun everyone. And I think he might have some problems doing that in the NFL if he's trying to run east and west. Oh. Um, at that average. What's that? I pulled up his size because you were touching on his sh shiftiness, mm -hmm. his unwilling, perhaps a little unwillingness for contact, 510 to a five, but I couldn't help but look at that yards per carry average. Good oh, God, it's ridiculous. Eight yards. <laughs> okay, yeah. anyway. <laughs> Mainly because of his 2018 and 2019 season, so much this past mm -hmm. year. And he has had some problems fumbling too. So. Mm -hmm. That is definitely going to oh, but he did run a four four one at his pro day. So you know the guy's fast. He's not uh, he's not Chuba Hubbard fast, but he is one right. of the faster backs in this class. And I think that he's going to be more. He could be more of a lightning to someone's thunder. Um, oh, yep. If if someone if they could teach him how to actually hit a hole with some power, he could be an every down back. But right now he's going to be more. I don't know. I just don't see him as an every down back at the moment. We'll see. We'll see how, how, where he ends up and everything like that. But I really thought that he was kind of the bee's knees until I really kind of started looking at him and his game and reading about him and everything like that. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, if he, if he ends, if he, if people can get, can get him to commit to running into a pile with some sort of effectiveness. Yeah. He's going to be great. But until then, uh, I'm, what do you do? You think he's what the number two running back drafted in Dynasty? With maybe I North lean towards the North one? Carolina guy. What is it, Javante Williams? I would lean yeah. that way a little, but the general consensus is Etienne is the two. Um, I don't know you said it best. Landing spot. Who's yeah. the guy that's in Kansas City right now? LSU shorter guy, Clyde Edwards Elair. Obviously, Kansas City's always picking in the you know bottom of the first because they're a good team. I don't what think if they, what if he what if he ended up there? I think that it would be they would benefit from more of Najee Harris than FTN. 
be back. Well, because I don't think Nigel because Pirro be there. Clyde Edwards at is more of a is more of a, a a slightly smaller Travis Etienne. He's not a big power guy. Where mm-hmm. that's what Kansas. Yeah, that's City what I was getting at. You get a little bit more size here with Etienne, but mm. but decent. I mean, pretty good receiving chops, right? Yeah. Oh no, no, he's great. Yeah. I don't know, just just a speculation. Okay. Uh, why don't we move on to Najee Harris? We'll call Absolutely. that a we'll call that a middling segue. <laughs> middling segue. Najee Harris um, is generally the consensus the first back going to be taken uh, potentially day one first round. Uh, a lot of teams like uh, last few years are kind of waiting on running back because of value. Uh, he seems like the full package. Producing the SEC, the toughest mm-hmm. conference, mm-hmm. Like maybe the Big Ten. No, probably not. <laughs> I'm biased. Uh, average six yards per carry for his career. Uh, 43 catches last year. Nothing to sneeze at. That's really good. Yep. Uh, great size at 6'2", 230. 4, four five, unofficial 40 time. Uh, if he falls, because he should, you don't draft running backs earlier. there. Um, I could see him going to Pittsburgh at 24. That seems to be the uh, rumors I've, popping I've up seen, in the last couple of days. I've seen that in mock drafts because it's um, I pretty much at, 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 once the year starts, I start looking at mock drafts like daily. Sure. Um, yeah. NFL mock drafts, not fantasy. Uh, I don't care too much about fantasy mock drafts. I like NFL mock drafts. Um, yeah, no, I've seen him go to I've seen him go to Pittsburgh. I've seen him go fall into the second round too. I think a lot of teams don't want running backs in the first round anymore, mainly because of. I, I kind of wonder if it's just because of longevity. Like you want it absolutely is. You, it's really, it's because of overall value, which has taken a big hit because of longevity, injury, running back by yep. committee. Mm-hmm. You name it. It's it's, yeah. I'm I'm I've backed off the running backs don't matter thing. I was kind of high on the last couple of years because you have your your generational talents, your your uh, running backs, like CMCs, matter, so. your your Derrick Henrys, and even even a Derrick Henry. If it's a short career, if you want to pony up the 13, 14, 15, whatever, sixteen mil, and get a good four or five years out of them, and maybe win a title, there's still value there especially for these highly competitive teams that are highly competitive every year. Um, To finish up on Najee, uh, we touched on the Pittsburgh thing. Uh, Off air, me and you kind of, you put me to task about uh, really Pittsburgh hasn't produced the best fantasy running backs in the previous couple of years uh, because of Connor being in and out of the lineup and the guys behind him being, hmm, I don't know, underwhelming. Um, But I think Uh, if there's a franchise that can quarterbacking as well in Pittsburgh and and bad quarterback. Yeah. And, uh, a pouncy, both pouncies retired, so the center's gone out of uh, Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. But as far as a franchise that I think can right the ship, add a couple pieces to the offensive line, draft a guy like Najee Harris. If that happens, I mean, we're talking fantasy gold. I think I think you know? they're gonna I think they're gonna lean towards their first pick just because, and oh, and it's only because they not only lean did towards they, what you cut out for a second. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Defense. I'm gonna no. I think they're gonna lead towards offensive line with their first pick, okay. mainly because they lost their center and and Pouncey, uh, Marcus Pouncey, that is, um, has been a staple in Pittsburgh for a long time. Oh, and when sure. he's and when he's missed time, it they can tell you it can shows. tell the difference. Couldn't and so more. I think they're gonna maybe while center is in the deepest position in the draft this year, and I don't know mm-hmm. if they're gonna go center, but they also have not resigned Villanueva either. So. It, the left tackle, correct? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So they got to get that done, mm-hmm. unless there, they're moving up to take one of these other, top two and, tackles. Yeah. There's a well. There's a bunch of tackles that might go in the first round this year too. So okay. And so Pittsburgh could be one one of those teams that goes after a tackle and not Najee Harris. Not, but they not could be back. But they can. They could always. They could always come back around and and maybe grab and you know maybe move up into the second or something or move back into the first and in, in the back half and still grab Najee Harris as well. Right. It's a possibility. Oh yeah. And you, second yeah that's fair yeah there are actually are a lot of teams that like on day two uh because you have all night to uh talk to other teams uh as soon as that second day of the draft starts bam somebody moves up and takes a quarterback or a running back because mm-hmm. yeah. they're just I mean, right in that spot to get the capital they need to Taylor. go yeah that would actually be a really good turnaround uh having said that josh either way you do it if you if you go tackle in the first move up to the beginning of the second to address running back or vice versa. Najee goes at 24 and they move up to grab a tackle that fell. Mm-hmm. Obviously not as good of a tackle. I think both those situations would bode very well for a fantasy back. Yeah. That's all I got on Najee. Cool. Uh, let's, we're going to kind of combine Javante Williams and three and four, uh, mainly because they played for the same team. 
Uh, Devontae Williams is my new favorite running back in this year's draft class. Mm. I'm going to say new favorite just because I didn't really know much about him. Um, he is That's kind of part about research. Yeah, it is. And he's kind of a, an all around guy that can do just about everything. Uh, the only knock on Javante Williams. Well, there's a couple of them, I guess, is that a, he doesn't have a big workload in, in Carolina, but a lot of that is because of the effectiveness of, of Michael Carter and B right. um, he's just not the fastest guy in the world. He ran a four, okay. he ran a four five, five. Well, that's not terrible for any running back, you know, but you usually want a little bit faster back, um, you know, and and I've heard Javante Williams being called the thunder to Michael Carter's lightning, but Michael Carter only ran a four five forty in his pro day. Mm-hmm. So I'm not exactly saying that. I mean, like a, a five hundred. And again, a folks, that's pro day. Like, yeah, might have even been embellished to get to four five. Maybe not. I mean, it, it's it hard could to not say. It's kind of a thing, though, but uh, four but five I mean, is kind of that watermark, in my opinion. You start getting over four or five, and I might be worried. Yeah. Under four or five and under, depending on your other talent set, maybe I'm fine with it. But go ahead. Um, you know he can catch the ball, although he doesn't have a lot of. Res- I would like to, I would have liked to have seen more, but a lot of that kind, a lot of that work kind of went, to, or some of it went to Michael Carter. Um, I don't really know what else to say. I the, other than I really like these guys. Like I thought maybe they. They both kind of bloomed in their last season, uh, in the, their yeah. 2020 season in North mm-hmm. Carolina. And I was kind of like, and I did look into this. I was like, well, is that just because the offensive line got better? No, it actually got worse. In 2019, the North Carolina offensive line r- ranked 81st out of the 140 whatever um, FCFs, whatever, uh, Division One schools. And then right. in 2020, it ranked 102nd. Yeah, it went from 81st to 102nd. That Not is good. bad. That is like, that's bottom third right there, you know? Yeah, that's awful. And you get two backs to succeed behind a bottom third offensive line. That's saying something. That, that's yeah. saying something. And like, I like Javante Williams a little bit better than Michael Carter. He's a couple of inches bigger. He's not okay. quite as fast, but he's got a little bit more power. Michael Carter, obviously, being a, he's like 5'9", five, 5'8". Um, a little bit like smaller in weight too. And like I said, he ran a four or five. So, you know, for a, for a smaller guy and running a four or five, that's interesting. Um, it could have just been a bad day. I've seen guys have bad days in the combine when they, when they run the combine and sure. they're actually, they look a lot faster on the field and they out, they're out I was running. Just gonna say, more. Sometimes I mean, they don't run a great 40 and their game speed is better. Yeah, exactly. Or, um, you know, I've seen guys have amazing, uh, 40, like just ran the fastest they have ever run in their life and they're 40 at the combine. And then you get them on the field and you're like, this guy ran a four, four, like, you know, um, it, it, that 40 is kind of, it's a skewed measurement. It's, it's more or less just to it's do a, long it's speed. A tool, like, yeah. It's a tool like anything else. Don't, we don't have, we can't afford to put too much clout in Yeah, any one tool. I mean, I'd like, they both, uh, Michael Carter and Javante Williams, I'm looking at this right had 25 in 2020 so i don't know yeah yeah they each had 25 receptions oh that's a little better i mean you know and they split their workload pretty evenly i mean 156 rushes to 157 to javante michael carter to javante Javante williams yeah (laughs) 25 receptions. i love it when a plan comes Um, together we drew it up just like that but the training camp (laughs) michael carter was a little bit more efficient he got 1245 yards uh javante williams had 1140 like these guys are really similar in numbers like it is and it's pretty scary, actually. Michael Carter is slightly more efficient with his numbers, but sure. I'm guessing Javante Williams, being the bigger guy, probably had some more short short uh, short yardage uh, plays that average drawn down. up for him to for bring, sure. maybe bring that that down a little what about bit. Touchdowns? Did you did you dot that down? Yeah, um, last year Carter had nine, or sorry, a combined eleven, and Javante Williams had a combined twenty two. There you go. Goal line back. Yeah. Yeah. But none of them, but neither one of them had over um, 175 carries or yeah, I'm sorry, over 177 in any year. And they're probably just because they played together, you know, exactly. I'm not saying Javante Williams can't, but that's definitely a knock on him. Um, everything I read about Javante Williams and Michael Carter is, can these guys ha- actually hold up to an Handle. NFL mm-hmm. workload? Because, you know, especially with moving up to 17 games this year, 
you know, of people, guys that are only getting the ball 100 to 200 or 150 to 200 times, you know, now you're looking at closer to more like 350, 400 touches, you know, mm -hmm. as a, as a true workhorse back. And neither one of these guys I don't think are so. No, but, fact, the, they, but they could definitely, the I think, I think we have, we're seeing the very tail end of it. You, the more it's, you it's almost like relieving relief and pitchers and closing pitchers, you know, however many decades ago that started such a specialized timeshare type of thing, you know, that's yeah, just that's it's, a, it's a little bit going. different. That's a little bit different in baseball. Sure. Um, yeah. uh, but I get, I get where you're coming from. It's just, just because they, if you, they keep adding games, cause they're, they're talking like they want to get up to 18 games. You're not, you're not, you're how many running backs are going to last 18 games plus, plus an off seat or a post. I wouldn't, I wouldn't. I wouldn't tempt fate if I'm a coach and I'm yeah. making those Let's calls on. Oh man. I want yeah. two backs. Yes. If I have a CMC, obviously I want to get 80% and I want, but I want to keep them healthy. So, you know, like load management in the NBA. I mean, that's yep, it's ramp, running it's, rampant, it's, but something it, yeah. like that, you know, you just got to do it. You got to do it. If you want to win games, quite frankly. So let's us fantasy about, folks uh, have to accommodate for that. Let's move on to, uh, to Kenneth Gainwell. I, I wanted you to cover him. I thought I thought you wanted to cover him, so I gave you. I don't Kenneth know if I ever Gainwell. verbally mentioned it or text, but uh, I did. I do. I do. I did. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Uh, speaking of role players, I mean, we're talking about a great, an amazing role player. Uh, could excel, especially he's talking in P PPR fantasy. Uh, five eleven, one ninety one, four three nine, unofficial forty. Didn't play last year. Opted out. His family had lost four family members to COVID. So I don't want to hear any BS about him not loving football or not really? being a teammate. Not that you were saying that, but there's been some chatter about I did that. Not, I did not know that. Yeah. I don't, I don't besmirch anyone who wanted to take no, last season neither off. should you. Um, That's why I, I put I that know comment that, in there. And, and I think it's really weird that, and I want to see, I want to actually see the numbers of how many players are still on their team after they opted out because Kansas City cut Damian Williams and there was a couple other guys that opted out last year that got cut. Mm -hmm. And I'm just mm -hmm. like, Dude, you can't, you can't, but you can't. Yeah, uh, look You're down right. your it's nose at some situation. guy who wanted, who wanted to keep their family safe in the middle of a global pandemic. Yeah, yeah. but on the other hand, as from a roster management perspective, I mean, I, I, let's put it this way: for let's hypothetically, the Chiefs say you're fine, we support you, paid your full contract. Uh, we just wish we could have you back, but this move and that move dictates that we got to let you go. Like I can see that too. But I would err on the side of what you're saying that that's BS. You know, don't don't. I'm I'm not trying to put words into anyone's guy. mouth. It just looks right. a little fishy. It looks a little fishy, and that's why I put this in my notes. I just wanted to put that out there on the show, folks. Yeah, we uh, support folks who need to take care of their family, and be safe, and for healthy. sure. Elite level satellite back hands for days lines up everywhere. Slot backfield at well out, out wide wildcat. <sighs> oh my tiger God. cat. Because <laughs> I, I remember picture, you said hands for days, and so I'm picturing him. His entire body <laughs> is covered with hands. <laughs> Ooh, creepy! I yeah. feel like that's out of a horror movie or something. <laughs> yeah, that's a um, real Cronenberg thing right there. <laughs> there's a long line of productive NFL ready backs that have come out of Memphis: Daryl Henderson, Tony Pollard, Antonio Gibson, and D'Angelo Williams. If you go back oh, yeah. several years, um, and despite the receiving chops, he's still rushed for over 1,400 yards and 13. Uh, rushing scores in 2019 to yeah. go along with and he will be fresh uh he uh so yeah that's all i've got on gainwell um i'm a fan of these kind of backs uh because as we just talked about you know so, you've got to find these role players that excel is he a role of, player or is he like the next alvin kamara mm, he definitely didn't have that size uh to be an alvin kamara or that balance and strength I, but i'm sorry um, how big you, how big was he Five eleven, one ninety one. Yeah, but yeah, but you can get him to bulk up. Fair if you can get you him can, up to two hundred pounds. Put, you maybe. Can, yeah, you can put mass on. I someone. just think Kamara is one of the strongest grow. running backs in the NFL with a, a phenomenal I balance. I disagree, but so. that's okay. <laughs> I think you're wrong, but anyway. No, so fine. in that regard, no, I, I don't think he could. He could. I don't think his ceiling is that high. But um, you know, your typical poor examples. Man, your, Kamara, uh, then? Oh, what's that? A poor, poor man, man. Kamara. Sure. Sure. Okay. I just don't think okay. he produces on the goal line as well. Well, I'm poor, and, I'm poor and, I, and, and even though it sounds like <laughs> I, I'm down on Alvin Kamara, I do like him as a player. I'm just not as high on. Not when compared but, to Saquon and others. Yeah, I, right. like you, you, you seem like you gush about Kamara and I'm like, 
And I'm just like, I'm just not that high. Like I'm not like falling head over heels in love with Kamara. I don't think his run game is um, as good as others. Let's put it that way. Um, I love him in the receiving game and he's great in open space, but when it comes to, you know, between the tackles. Yeah. I, like other than like getting it, like, you know, other than goal line, I think he kind of struggles at times and, or the, or the saints don't use him that way. Let me put it that. Way. That's what I was going to say. I think it's more product of the offense. I, and yeah, I think that in fantasy like, terms, I'm on your side a bit because we both were about the quarterback situation, but in sheer talent of Camara, which is kind of how you were making that reference. I still defer to no gain. Gainwell's not fine. Poor man's <laughs> like you said, Camara. Well, I guess um, I think of the, or... um, who's that guy that was in Seattle and then was in Washington. I just blanked on his name receiving. Ah, Mick, Mick something. JB McKissick. Thank you, McKissick. So thank McKissick. Okay. Poor uh, rich man's JD McKissick. Ooh. I'm done. <laughs> No, so you don't you, like that. So, so the, his range of outcomes could be JD McKissick or Alvin Kamara. Cool, probably somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Okay. Probably I, that's somewhere. not bad. That I mean, that could I be like a it. nice. That could end up being depending on where he lands. Mm -hmm. That could be a nice, you know, like I mid, enjoyed watching on mid late film. Late it, round was, it was value. a pleasure. I have yeah, not I, seen any highlights or anything of him, so I. I'm glad I can give them to you. It was it was a nice cut up too because it was real quick. It was like. Next play, next play. If it was a, like a long incompletion down the field, you wouldn't even see the end of the play. Next play, next play. And he'd highlight uh, gain well when he'd be huh. in the slot or out wide. Like, boom, red circle. Snap, go. And it was just so it was real productive. And it, it, I liked his tape. I really did. Cool. Awesome. I'm glad I'm glad we had you cover him. Um, mm -hmm. I was going to do another back, but we're kind of running a little. So why don't we just kind of wrap up the show a little bit? Um, do some we'll, housekeeping and yeah, we'll do a little yeah. housekeeping. Like I mentioned at the top um, for the first round of the NFL draft, at least the first, I think we're just going to do the first round. Um, we will be in person together in the basement studio over there in Chris's neck of the woods. Um, we, you can catch that on the, uh, the Twitch stream right, right up there at twitch.tv slash amazing fantasy football you can also email us at amazing ffb at gmail.com leave us some constructive criticism you can ask us for an invite to our discord server we know it's not fantasy football time necessarily but you know you can hang out and chat too we, you know we got we got some guys that we chime in about football stuff and you know yeah, we, we can talk whatever football or fantasy football all all year long yep. there's no off season <laughs> No, there really isn't uh, actually. Um, so we got what a week and a half. I'm gonna try and get out two player videos. Okay. I apologize, folks. The logistics of the videos and stuff is and and quite frankly, time consuming has has been getting the yeah, best of me. But if, I really am looking forward to doing it. Yep. And if you're um, listening to this in podcast format, you can check out our YouTube channel. Um, I do have some pl uh, player videos there. I did uh, what we're mm -hmm. calling an eye on Baker Mayfield, Nick Chubb, not a Browns fan. Um, Chris, Car uh, Chris uh, Carson? Carson and, um, and I'm, blanking. I'm blanking on the receiver that I did. Um, but I did four videos. I haven't done any more yet because I am waiting to get my new PC. Part of the reason why I'm going to visit Chris because he builds PCs and we're going to segue into, you can check out Chris's Twitch yeah. channel at twitch.tv slash hardware dynasty, where he builds PCs and does some midget gaming with some of our online friends. And, uh, unless I had bent pens and then I just hang out for two hours. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was still fun on Friday. Um, I, was, I learned, I learned some stuff about Robert Woods was and, a receiver. Robert Woods was a yes, receiver. Thank you. Thank you. I knew it was someone mm -hmm. out West. Um, and that was, that was some pretty good game film too. I didn't really know a whole lot about Robert Woods other than, you know, he played for the bills and, and the Rams and then he's pretty decent, but you know, he's, he put up some pretty good game film. He just needs a better quarterback, which he now has with Stafford. So which he now has, I always picture Robert Woods as a great run after catch guy and a strong runner. Once he gets the ball in his hands and must be yeah. a heck of a route runner. Mm. No, I, I mean he's not a strong guy. Maybe I should watch all of the video, Josh. Yeah, maybe you it should. It looks like I watched almost half. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. <laughs> I'll make sure to I'll make sure to watch only half of your videos. The too. rest of them are full of red lines. I have finished almost all the other videos. Um. Anyways, so yeah, Chris is going to do some game film. Um, and I think he's going to do it more in a dynasty aspect. I'm focusing more on redraft. 
and just kind of looking at some um, some older players or some you know vet quote unquote veteran players that's you know anyways uh you like i said you can check us out on all those things if you're watching in youtube format as mentioned you can check us out on podcast format pretty much wherever podcasts are available uh, don't get your podcast from your local uh podcast dealer behind burger king that's not cool you can just find it on the internet shady. yeah shady that's a little shady. you're you're gonna you're gonna get some viruses or something in your podcast <laughs> device uh, anyways uh, until next week, which we will be covering wide receivers and a few uh, tight ends. That Those are uh, rookie prospects, not NFL wide receivers. Not yeah, yet yeah. NFL more, wide more receivers. Stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're still doing rookie stuff. And then after that, we will be doing the stream, like I already mentioned. And then after the stream, we will be doing a kind of reaction show to the first round, I believe. Maybe this, maybe the first three rounds. I'm not really sure how what we're doing. We'll, with we'll that. have to look at time constraints and, and yep. go from there. Yeah. Yep. 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 So, until next time, everyone, stay safe. Wear a mask. Get your vaccine if you are able to. I think as of right now, most people in the country are eligible to get one. Whether you can is a different story, but please try and get one. I have. I am fully vaccinated. I had zero side effects from absolutely none. I'm, 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 I guess I'm kind of more forget, of a, get a different one. Now I forgot which one I got. You I was got, tired. you got the Moderna and you said mm -hmm. you, you were a little sluggish and your arm hurt. I, I had yep. nothing. I, I felt fine the entire time. And, I am not lying. And then I was fine in a day or two, day and a half, whatever. Yeah. I was fine after that. But yeah, please get vaccinated. It's not, it's not just for your own good, but it's for your family and it's for everyone around you too. So yeah. Check us out, podcast, YouTube, Twitch on a week from Thursday. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Have a good bye. Adios.